Hi, I'm here with Kate Broderick. How are you doing, Kate? Hi, I'm doing well, Leah. Thanks. Um, so you wrote the fantastic hydrotherapy chapter for ACNM, which is pretty much a first, isn't it? Um, a chapter on hydrotherapy in modern times. <laughs> a chapter on hydrotherapy I haven't seen in any other naturopathic texts. Um, clearly a passion of yours. Yes, definitely a passion of mine. And um, I think that there's a, a bit of a difference between the US where I came from and where I was trained in Australia um, because there, there is actually some emphasis on hydrotherapy and naturopathic training in the US, but, but it's lost out of the training here yeah. um, for the most part. And that's why we don't see those chapters at this point in the hydrotherapy or in the, the naturopathic textbooks that come out of Australia. Mm, no, absolutely. Before we get into the hydrotherapy in more detail, um, how did naturopathy find you originally? Tell us a bit well, about the history. That, yeah, that's a really long story. Um, I, I suppose um, if I can make it short, um, I, I used to be a lawyer um, and I was uh, around the time of 9-11 um, when everybody was having an existential crisis. Um, I similarly had that and was looking for some change of my career um, so that I could do something that would be more helpful, hopefully, to the health of the planet. And at that time, everybody around me was being diagnosed with cancer. My whole family, it seemed like, was um, having cancer diagnoses. And, I, and my best friend died of cancer at age 32. And I just started wondering, why is it that we all are, are so sick? Um, and I wanted to go forward and see if I could figure out what were the causes of all this illness and how we could remedy that because the conventional system clearly wasn't doing the job. Okay. And then you started your training and then where did you go to from there? Um, from, uh, from doing my training at Bastyr University and I also studied um, five element acupuncture at the Lucing Dow School in Seattle. Mm -hmm. um, I was practicing in Seattle at that point um, after graduating and then also teaching at Bastyr and my focus of teaching at Bastyr was in the hydrotherapy lab and also in naturopathic philosophy and clinical theory um, and some uh, human physiology as well from the naturopathic perspective. And so um, I'm fascinated with the way that the human body works, absolutely fascinated. And um, uh, hydrotherapy gives me a lot of opportunity to really ponder how it is that the mechanisms within our body works because that's the reason why hydrotherapy works. Okay, so tell us a bit about that. I mean, because hydrotherapy in Australia is, is quite, it's been quite hidden for so long and, and underutilised, and you're definitely pioneering bringing it back into education over here, which is fantastic. Um, why is it so important and, and why do we need to reconnect to our lost art? Well, when we think about um, naturopathy from the perspective of um, stimulation of the vital force, or it, you can use other language from other systems, um, improving the flow of qi, um, you might say in Chinese medicine or prana in Vedic um, uh, thought, when we think about improving the, the state of the vital force, the physiological mechanisms behind that are all of our homeostatic mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And so how do we tune up our homeostatic mechanisms and how do we unblock things that are blocked? And we've got lots of great therapies for unblocking things that are blocked. Homeopathy is really nice for that. Flower essence is really nice. Acupuncture. But what do we have to really tune up our body's homeostatic mechanisms? And hydrotherapy is the best thing that naturopaths have. Um, to do that. And mm -hmm. what I've realized um, being in Australia now for the past seven years, now eight, almost eight years, mm -hmm. is that Australian naturopaths, because of the way that it's sort of um, petered out in the naturopathic landscape here, don't really understand fully what naturopathic hydrotherapy is mm -hmm. um, from that perspective of what are we doing to tune up the body is homeostatic mechanisms. And I even have trouble getting that point across to my students sometimes, which is an interesting thing because it's very much emphasized in the teaching. Mm. But it's a really hard thing to grok that if you utilize alternating hot and cold water, you are stimulating the body's homeostatic mechanisms. And one of my teachers used to say, it's like taking the, the vital force to the gym or taking the homeostatic mechanisms to the gym. You're tuning them up. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that, um, if I could get sort of one thing across about what is the basis of naturopathic hydrotherapy, that's what it is. Amazing. Amazing. And how are you seeing it changing the education in Australia 
and, and obviously, I mean, because in having removed something as fundamental as that and then bringing it in now, how is it changing things? Yeah, well, I think that it's part and parcel of a larger movement that there has been um, away from vitalism in naturopathy and a bit away from the tradition and more into the sort of newer, sexier kind of functional medicine stuff and biochemical pathways, which is much more reductionist way of thinking. It has a huge amount of value, but it's a much more reductionist way of thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the loss of hydrotherapy has played into that movement away from holism and towards reductionism within the scope of naturopathy. And that's happening in the U.S. as well. It's happening mm -hmm. everywhere um, because the biochemistry is really, you know, compelling. Mm -hmm. um, it's fun to tinker with, but we are substituting our own judgment as to what this whole organism needs. Mm. Um, when we do that, rather than saying, I'm going to perturb this system a little bit and let it adjust itself by its own wisdom. So there's a, there's a very different philosophical bend there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what are you hoping that um, students and clinicians are going to take away from this? Do you think that a lot that of what you've contributed is immediately things that they can take away into their practice and change people or, yeah? I think so. I mean, the way that I've written the chapter, it has a fair bit of background information, not, not just about the history, but about the, the mechanisms by which hydrotherapy works. But I always, uh, I also, as I was writing, really wanted to give a bit of how-to information in the chapter, understanding the fact that a lot of the naturopaths practicing in Australia right now haven't had any hydrotherapy training within their formal education. Mm -hmm. And so I tried to write the chapter as a bit of a how-to manual so that that information would be out there and there would be some curiosity to work with it. So there's lots of stuff in the chapter that can be taken up and used. And I also, I always encourage everybody to utilize the hydrotherapy treatment on yourself first mm -hmm. before you go prescribing it to anybody else so that you can really understand the power that this has. I have so much fun reading my students' papers when they try these therapies on themselves and they're like, oh my gosh, I never had any idea that putting my feet in hot and cold water for three minutes um, at a time could possibly improve my digestion. But it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Well, look, I think it's, I was so excited to connect with you and so excited to include a chapter like this in the book because, you know, all of the lost arts, I mean, the fact that we can reclaim them, the fact that we can reintegrate them into our practice and can really embody and own the fullest extent of what we do that excites me, no end. And I think, you know, something like hydrotherapy has so much wide access and, you know, it doesn't cost our patients anything and, you know, all those other aspects that, you know, really, I guess, meet and connect to the part of me that wants our, our treatments to be as accessible as possible. So, I mean, I'm, I'm so grateful and I'm, I'm really excited to see how it changes education in the country because I think that as a standalone chapter, how it will influence the quality of education um, in the country, both in, both here and, and wider, because the textbook has been taken up in other countries. So thank you for the contribution. And um, I really, I can't wait to see how it all unravels. And thank you for the opportunity to write about it in the Australian um, uh, context, um, because the, it's been one of my sort of passions to bring this back into the Australian naturopathic landscape ever since I came here and found out that it wasn't here. Um, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> have to do something about this and, and it's been a, a, a stepwise process but I feel like we're making progress with it and yeah. I really um, hope that the passion will spark and that will spread. I think it will. I think it will. The opportunity to put it out there. Thank you. Thank you. Well let's um, fingers crossed next time we communicate we'll have seen big changes. So thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> yeah.